there are a lot of different bikes that can teach you to be a better rider. And no, they're not leader bikes or 600s. The first bike that's gonna teach you to be a better rider is really any sort of mini bike. Think of bikes like the Honda Grom or the Kawasaki Z125. These bikes probably shouldn't be pursued as a first and only motorcycle, as riding one will definitely provide limitations when it comes to navigating traffic and city roads. When you're topped out at 53 miles an hour, you're not gonna have a natural or comfortable place on the road if you're barely able to reach the speed limit. But these bikes can teach you a lot when it comes to actually controlling a bike. Think about taking the MSF course. The course instructors will have students on teeny tiny little motorcycles that can inspire confidence in anybody, even someone with zero motorcycle experience. These mini bikes have super accessible seat heights so nearly everyone can flat foot one comfortably, which will make it easy to not only build confidence but also practice finding the friction zone and doing slow speed maneuvers while knowing they can easily drop a foot down if they think they're about to lose balance. A mini bike like a Grom is also incredibly lightweight with a curb weight lower than 230 pounds. This diminutive stature is just another reason new riders will have a lot of confidence in themselves as they familiarize themselves with riding a motorcycle. A bike like a Grom or a Z125 have a lot of advantages over something like a scooter or even a small displacement pit bike as they still operate kind of like a full-sized motorcycle. They have a clutch and a manual gearbox and independent front and rear brakes. A scooter with a CVT style transmission can help you learn balance on two wheels, but the lack of a manual transmission will definitely prohibit your ability to learn. Riding on a mini bike also feels like a motorcycle. You're upright with your hands on the handlebars and your feet down on the pegs below you with the bike between your knees. You're not stepping through it like a scooter. The ergonomics and seating position will directly relate to your understanding on how your body position affects your motorcycle's handling, and you won't just have that same experience while sitting in a pass-through scooter where you sort of sit within it more than sitting atop of it. A mini bike while making a minuscule amount of power, usually less than 10 horsepower, will still have the shape and functionality of a full-sized bike, and it's definitely the easiest way to learn to use all the controls in a low-stakes scenario. While a small mini bike is definitely the easiest way to get your initial bearings on a motorcycle, there are other bikes that can help you to continue to learn. A small dual sport bike like the Yamaha TW200 or a Honda CRF230L are great examples. A small displacement dual sport or a farm bike will have a lot of the advantages of riding a mini bike while providing more of an opportunity to grow certain riding skills in other lower stakes settings. Small displacement dual sport or farm bikes are lightweight, make pretty modest amounts of power, and are typically dirt cheap to buy and maintain. Many of them don't need to be, even need to be plated, you can just ride them on your property or in dirt trails or just in a gravel pit somewhere. It's very low stakes. And that alone makes them powerful training tools as you're not gonna wanna push the limits of a more expensive motorcycle when you're learning. What's cool about cheap dual sport bikes is not only are they lightweight and fun, you can ride on the dirt. Riding off-road has many advantages for learning new skills. First, it will definitely help you understand the limits of traction of your tires under heavy acceleration or braking, and navigating rough or uneven terrain will quickly encourage you to learn how to balance and shift your weight around the bike in order to stay stable and in control. Plus, practicing on a dual sport bike in the light gravel road or a grassy area if you can find one creates less risk of injury. And yeah, falling down on gravel or grass can still suck, but being able to push the limits of a fun little farm bike without the risk of other cars or a hard concrete can be a little bit more forgiving for you and your bike. A super cheap, simple, and reliable dual sport like a TW200, a CRF230L, or a DR200 will allow you to push the limits that little bit. Because with anywhere between 14 and 20 horsepower, you won't be going all that fast no matter the circumstance. Plus, they are super bulletproof and can definitely take a beating. Having a cheap, lightweight, low power bike can definitely encourage you to try new styles of riding and techniques without the risk of grave injury or financial burden. Having a bike that you know can take a beating is one less thing to worry about when you're learning. And truth be told, last year when I was goofing around with Jigs or Bra and that tiny little pit bike, it was some of the most fun I've had on two wheels in a long time. It's really making me feel like I want another mini bike again. And on a similar note, while it doesn't 100% pertain to riding, owning a simple, older, single cylinder bike will definitely make you a better motorcyclist by way of learning to do your own maintenance or even accomplishing more challenging modifications or builds. We all see this time and time again, a new rider wants to take on a project bike 
and they end up with a cursed UJM four cylinder that they can never get to run right. They already have their workhorse daily bike that's only a few years old, so they figure why not allocate that remaining garage space to a project that they can tinker on and learn the ins and outs of on a motorcycle's mechanical components. Because when it comes time to swap a sprocket or a clutch pack or any other like level two piece of maintenance on your daily rider, it feels good knowing you've already done it a time or two on a project bike that you don't risk damage or messing up too badly. Level one maintenance or repairs like changing oil or adjusting and lubing your chain can be done by anybody who rides on two wheels on a motorcycle. It's super simple, cut and dry, and essential for a healthy bike. But those higher level maintenance repairs like sprocket swaps or clutch plates or brake jobs, it may create some uncertainty in a new bike owner. And I mean, if you don't wanna mess something up and you need to have the bike trailer to a shop or dealer, and if you find out you're well outside of your comfort zone once the bike is already all torn apart, and these jobs are by no mean expert level, but there are tons of little tricks and techniques that might not be glaringly obvious unless you've done it a time or two. And that's where the simple project bike comes in. You don't have to worry about getting stuck once it's already in pieces because half the time you've already bought it in pieces. A lot of people pursue older Japanese bikes as their first project and that stands for good reason. They're practically able to be ran forever with basic simple maintenance. But the big thing to remember when pursuing a project bike that will make you a better mechanic is to choose a single cylinder machine. A single cylinder bike has 25% of the engine components of an inline four and they're way less complicated. Every cafe racer restoration project comes to a screeching halt when the novice mechanic realized just how painfully complex tuning and sinking four carbs is. And frankly, old and neglected four-cylinder fuel-injected bikes aren't always a whole lot easier either. Sure, you might not have to deal with all the pieces of a carburetor, but dealing with an ECU and clogged injectors and faulty fuel rails, tracing down broken components with a voltmeter isn't a lot of fun either, and they're just way more complicated. So getting a simple single-cylinder motorcycle that's air-cooled and just not a whole lot going on with it as your first project bike, they definitely improve and provide you with the earliest and easiest entry point to repair or restore a motorcycle. You can think back to, you know, working on a lawnmower or something like that. The fewer moving parts, the simpler it is to diagnose, repair, and maintain. And you'll really learn stuff too and it feels satisfying to fix it. You know how much we love Rockform phone cases and handlebar mounts around here, but did you know they have an entire lineup of products that can further take advantage of your existing case? Your Rockform phone case is literally the key that unlocks a whole ecosystem of other products aimed to make your life way easier. Rockform's cases have notoriously strong magnets, like really strong. So strong that if my phone is in my pocket, it will sometimes pull my kitchen cabinet doors open if I stand too close to the handles. That's literally happened. To further take advantage advantage of the world's most magnetic case, you could get yourself the magnetic power bank. The power bank is so strong you can attach it to your phone and set it in your motorcycle tail bag or backpack and not have to worry about them losing contact and missing out on valuable charge time, which is a huge game changer for motorcyclists on the go. You can also take advantage of their car accessories like the wireless magnetic car vent mount that keeps your phone magnetically mounted to your car's air vent while it's charging up wirelessly. If you're a motorcyclist, skip the cheap accessories and get the best of the best that's going to stand the test of time. Time with Rockform. They've been a longtime supporter of the channel for over four years now, and I truly stand by their brand and their products. I've used them daily all the time. If you want in on the Rockform action, click the link in the description and use the code YN25 to get 25% off your order. That's YN25 for 25% off of your order. Thank you to Rockform for supporting today's video. Now let's get back into it. If you want to learn how to truly be a fast sport bike rider, the best thing you can do is to ride a small displacement sport bike. I've said it before, and I'll say it again, one of the best possible tools you can use for that job is the Kawasaki Ninja 400. But yammy, the Ninja 500 is so good! But you can find a Ninja 400 for pretty darn cheap, and it really is the optimal package of power and weight and affordability. It is a tried and true platform for sport bike riders to learn how to manage speed, cornering, and braking effectively both on street and even on track, and the things are just damn near bulletproof. The Ninja 400 has been around since 2018 and has a dainty little 399cc parallel twin that makes just about 45 horsepower and 28 foot-pounds of torque. The whole package weighs around just 360 to 370 pounds depending on the year and inclusion of ABS. The Ninja 400 or similar small displacement sport bikes will provide enough power for you to learn throttle control and experience revving an engine out further than you typically would on a mini bike or dual sport without being particularly dangerous. Sure, motorcycles are inherently dangerous in general, 
control, but learning how to push the limits on a bike making 45 horsepower will get you up to speed with your riding skills a whole lot quicker than you'd be able to get on something making even 75 horsepower. Imagine you're trying to push the limits of grip on your tires the effectiveness of your brakes. These instances on small bikes will happen at much lower speeds than you would on a bigger bike. Gradually increasing lean angle on a 360 pound bike is going to feel a whole lot less scary than doing the same corners on a 430 pound bike that makes 100 horsepower or God forbid a 200 horsepower missile. As any experienced track day rider knows, the key to being fast on the track isn't about all out top speed or high power figure, it's the ability to master your cornering ability and your braking distances. And it's just a million times easier to push these thresholds on a machine with lower power and lower stakes. You're just using less of your brain and everything's just easier. You'll still get the experience of riding a fully fared machine designed for sporty riding, you'll still get in the pocket and lean off the seat of the bike and rev the engine out, but you're not going to be taking as big of a risk to the safety of you or your wallet. Because because as I mentioned, it's a whole lot easier to learn when you're not so worried about dumping an expensive bike. And the final bike that can make you a better rider is a larger middleweight machine that still retains some analog simplicity without a bunch of tech or nanny rider aids. Traction control and different throttle maps are fine and all, but gradually growing into a bigger bike that still requires finesse and control is really the next step once you've found the limits of your beginner bike. If you feel as if you've maxed out your Ninja 400, something like an SV650 or MT07 can be the next logical step. Moving up to a relative relatively simple middleweight two-cylinder machine will help you keep progressing your skills and ability in a logical way. If you make the jump from a beginner bike to a leader bike or a hyper naked or really even a 600cc four-cell sport bike, you're going to have this really big gap in your learning. There might be wheelie control or rain mode or other things that will prevent you from outright crashing, but the human-machine connection will have a big disconnect if you haven't really leveled up your skills. Remember, for massive amounts of bikes, your own ability as a rider is going to be the limit for how far the bike will go. Moving up to a machine that makes about 75 horsepower so and isn't laden with too much tech is sort of the next frontier for you to continue learning. You'll have to get used to administering more power with precise throttle control. Riding a larger bike at higher speeds will necessitate more deliberate and purposeful braking. It will teach you a greater sense of responsibility as you manage the increase in size and displacement across all disciplines of riding. And these sort of naked bikes like the SV650 or MT07 that fall on the smaller side of the middleweight category are tried and true platforms that are relatively bulletproof and easy to maintain. Thousands of riders over the years have sharpened their skills on these bikes so they create a great opportunity to go from beginner to intermediate rider with the right practice and seat time. Thanks for making it all the way to the end of the video. What do you think? Should mini bikes be standard issue for all new riders? Should new riders in the US be limited to smaller bikes as they are in Europe? Do all you boomers think I am just a millennial sissy boy for saying it's hard to rebuild and sink four carburetors? Of course, let me know down below. Thanks so much for watching and supporting the channel. I will catch you all later. Oh, and bonus motorcycle that will teach you how to be a better rider, of course, is a Turbo Busa. Managing boost on a Hayabusa is something that will absolutely put hair on your chest and make you a better rider. Fact, Cleveland was once the country's fifth largest city. Yeah, not anymore. Goodbye. Keep watching Yemi Nerd.